Hi, and welcome back. And firstly, I'd like to reassure you that this is a film about mysterious UFOs and not climate change. <laughs> and I say that for a reason. So a bit of a personal story. Oh, hang on, first start. I'm wearing a shirt. That's because some very nice French people took me and my wife out for dinner. Thank you very much. But back to the story. So years ago, when I first left college, I worked for the BBC at Ealing Film Studios as a trainee assistant film editor. And I had the immense privilege of working with this incredible team who was editing John le Carrier's series, Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. Wow. And it was important that they did an assessment on the trainees. And one, <laughs> and one of the questions was, how does Simon take criticism? So my editor sends me to the canteen to get him a cup of tea and a nice cake. So I did. And they had just these weird cakes, but... I brought him back a cake. He hated the cake that I'd brought him and he threw it at me as hard as he could. And I went, holy shit. And he wrote in my report, takes criticism badly. I thought that was really mean, but maybe he has a point. After my genuine heartfelt attempt at doing some really basic science of how the greenhouse effect works. I don't think I'm gonna bother buying people cakes in the afternoon anymore. So cut. Let's forget the big problems that are affecting our planet and get back to UFOs. I'm only joking, I actually like UFOs. And I read this amazing thing, that the British Public Records Office are going to publish, declassify, and publish every single UFO report that has been handed into the RAF, or the Ministry of Defence over the years, and make them public. And I thought, wow, that is so cool. It'd be really interesting to read them. So I am so lucky to be married to Dorothy. And Dorothy was a senior, and I really mean senior statistician in the US healthcare service. And as soon as I mentioned <laughs> that we had all the data of UFOs, she immediately said you could do a statistical analysis on the sightings, the dates, and where they were seen in Britain. That might be interesting. So yesterday, between feeding the sheep, I got maps and started putting blobbies all over Britain as accurately as I could, corresponding to these sightings. And then I found something really disturbing. It had been done before. I was completely wasting my time. Here's a map of the UFO hotspots of Britain. And I think it doesn't really show much. I mean, I think the hotspots are in centres of population. Mm-hmm. I think they're also quite near airports. Mm-hmm. But something came out of it. Something fascinating. Something I would like to share with you today. And it's a good one. So I gave up looking at all the data and started reading the reports. And there's one in 1957, which I'm sure if you're into UFOs, you know about, but it was new to me. And through a bit of digging, found some really interesting information on this case. It's called the Silpho UFO incident in North West Yorkshire near Scarborough. If you know about it, excellent. If you don't know about it, this is what happened. So in November 1957, the year of my birth, not the date, a UFO was found, crashed on the Yorkshire Moors outside the northern seaside town of Scarborough by some people. It's metallic of unusual construction with 
hieroglyphs on the base and it seemed to be hollow and it apparently had come out of space. So it was brought back to the seaside town of Scarborough where it changed hands for a few tens of pounds. And one of the best stories is that it was on display, not at the museum, but in a chip shop window for years. I'm not a real expert on the Silpho incident. I'm just reporting what I know. And I guess there's people out there who know a lot more than me fill in these blanks for me. So they took it home, it was hollow, they opened it up and they found a copper, thin-leafed copper book of 17, uh, 17 pages inside with a message. This coded message in the 17-page book said, improve or disappear. Seems a bit inefficient to use 17 pages to say just those few words, but maybe it said more. So they sent samples of the object to London, supposedly to the Science Museum, but I think it went to the wrong place. Scroll forward to 2020 and David Clark of Sheffield University, um, a lecturer in myths and legends and journalism, found the object and it has a really interesting history. It was lost. It was sent to the Victorian Albert Museum, which is a museum of basically art, and then somehow it ended up at the Natural History Museum in the basement, and somebody did look at it for a while, and then it just got lost. Anyway, David Clark, with good research, has found it, bits of it, in a box. It's now in the London Science Museum, and here are his fascinating pictures of parts of the object that have recently turned up. So let us all know what you know about the Silpho UFO. I think it's really interesting. I'd like to go to the museum and look at the artifacts. And if you have inside knowledge on what it was or what you think it is, share it with us because the truth is out there. Thank <laughs> you.